Hey guys, today we're going to talk about audio effect tricks. I've got 10 of my favorite audio tricks prepared and I'm going to show you what cool stuff we can do with them. Let's look at the first audio effect that I have and it's called Redux. It's not a commonly used effect. I'll show you what it sounds like. Here's a simple black sound of mine without this effect on. Now when I apply this effect, you're going to notice that this effect degrades the audio quality of this sample. And that's pretty much what Redux is used for. Uh, I mostly just use it if I want to degrade uh, quality of a sample. My favorite setting in this effect is the soft setting because it's by default set to hard and I always click soft and set a relatively low downsampling uh, setting because when you go to when you go higher it it sounds too distorted for my ears I like to keep it around one to three what I wanted to do with this effect is uh, to put it in parallel mode. Usually I would do this by changing uh, the dry wet knob of an effect. Well, the parallel mode is just when you're playing the dry signal and the wet signal at once, and you can adjust the balance between these two signals. So the unaffected signal and the signal after the effect. Even though we don't have a dry wet knob in Redux, we can make a custom dry wet knob and here's what it looks like so now i can smoothly adjust between the dry setting and the wet setting here so in my case it's actually wet dry so here's how you make a custom dry wet knob for any effect you simply select the effect you want to put the dry wet knob on. You click command on the Mac or control on Windows and G. And that groups the effect inside something called an audio effect rack. Now you want to expand this view by clicking on this button over here. And the list of chains is going to appear. I'm going to hold Alt or Option and drag this chain down and that's going to duplicate it. And now on this chain, I'm going to select it and turn off the Redux effect on this chain. So we've got one chain with the Redux on and one chain without the Redux on. Okay, so once you have these two chains set up, you need to click on this chain button in here and this view is going to open up. Now what you need to do is to click over here and expand this bar all over this area and do the same thing for the second chain and you want to drag this upper end of this bar and drag it all the way to the right and do the reverse thing with the second chain actually let's rename these chains this one is going to be the wet and this one is going to be the dry to add the dry wet knob, you need to click on the macros button and this macros view is going to open up. You need to click on the map button over here. Click on this area, this gray area and click on the map button on any of these knobs. Now it's going to say chain selector, but actually it's a dry wet knob. Uh, when it's all the way down, it's going to be only the dry signal. It's actually going to be more uh, obvious when I crank the down sampling on the Redux. So let's, this is going to be the dry signal. And when we go all the way up, it's going to be all, only the wet signal. It's pretty obvious, right? And here we can blend between these two. 
Now you can also rename this knob by clicking on it, clicking Command and R and typing in dry slash wet. And you can hide this view by clicking the hide button. And there you go. You can adjust the Redux settings and you can blend it in with the dry signal with this dry wet knob. Okay, so the third effect we're going to look at is a limiter. This is a very commonly used effect. I'm sure you know what it does, but there's, a op and there's an option that not everyone knows in, in the limiter. And it's this button over here, the stereo or left and right switch. I'm going to explain to you what it does. So in stereo mode, the limiter affects left and right channels equally. So when a peak occurs only on the left channel, it's going to duck both left and right channels. But when you switch this button to the left-right setting, when a peak occurs only on one channel, it's going to duck only this channel. So as a result, the overall panning of the track, the stereo image, can be shifted a little bit. But that allows you for a little bit more headroom when you're mastering a track. I'm going to show you a bit of what it sounds like. So in stereo mode, I've got this the same plug. Notice that in this area, the track uh, is panned to the right just a bit. Right? But when I click on this button, it switches to the left-right mode. And in this mode, it's going to duck the right channel more than the left channel because a peak only occurs on the right channel. Let's see what it's, let's hear what it sounds like. You can hardly hear any difference between the left and right channels because the limiter ducks the right channel more than the left. It's really useful when mastering because it sometimes allows you for just a bit more headroom. That's just a little tip that I found in the Ableton manual which, by the way, is a great read. So the next effect we're going to take a look at is the auto filter. And the auto filter is pretty a pretty obvious effect. It's just a filter. There's this cool option in auto filter called an envelope. And what, an, what the envelope does here is it moves this knob for you according to the volume of the track. So when I crank this envelope knob, this knob is not going to stay in place. It's going to be adjusted by the volume of my audio signal. Here's what it sounds like. I'm sure you can hear the, the filter frequency going up whenever the volume is higher, right? This is just a cool effect that you can experiment with. So another effect that I have over here is the amp effect. And this is an effect that's rarely used, but it's really cool for adding a bit of saturation to an audio signal. So here's my, my chord sample without the amp effect on. And now when I turn on the amp, it's going to just add a bit, a little bit of saturation. It's going to distort some frequencies, but it's just going to add a little bit of flavor. I really like some of these settings in the amp effect. Especially I like this bass uh, setting and this uh, clean setting and even the blue setting. Uh, it has a dry wet knob, so of course you can blend it in with the original sample. When you're using it, watch out for this switch, because this switch controls the stereo image of your track. If it's set to mono, it's going to mono your signal. So that means uh, the signal is not going to be wide. For example, this chord is quite wide, but when I mono it, uh, it doesn't sound as good. And this switch is here because most amps are actually mono. 
like most guitar amps, and these settings are all modeled after guitar amps. Uh, for example, this, these two are modeled after the famous Vox AC30. But anyways, when you switch to dual, it acts like two amps, one for the left channel and one for the right, so you can keep the stereo image, the white signal. Okay, let's take a look at another effect, which is the corpus effect. And I've got a little melody over here. Uh, I'll play it to you what it sounds like without the effect on. So the corpus effect allows you to change the timbre of your sound to make it a little bit, make it sound a little bit more acoustic. Here's what this uh, Celesta sounds like when I apply the corpus. So here's how it works. You've got a couple of settings in here and all these are modeled after acoustic materials. And the pitch of this sample that you choose over here is controlled by this tune knob. Also, when you're adjusting this tune knob, you can see the note that the sample is playing. And that's useful if you want the sample from the corpus to match the key of your track, for example. Uh, also, a useful knob in here is the decay knob, because when it's too high, it's going to resonate for too long. I always try to keep it at a lower value, like this. Okay, and you've got also a cool filter, uh, which allows you to filter your, your sample and the dry wet knob at the end, to blend in uh, the sample you select over here with the original signal. Okay, uh, another effect I'm gonna show you is the autopan. I'm sure you know what an autopan uh, does by default. In case you don't know, I'm just going to explain that. The autopan allows you to shift the panning of any signal you put it on with an LFO. So if you're on headphones, you'll notice uh, for sure what I'm talking about. It just moves the panning of your track to the left and to the right channel according to this LFO shape over here. I like to use it when layering sounds. So for example here, I took a Chillaster, uh, I high passed it, and I'm using an autopan with a 50% amount, and I've got another layer over here which is the same signal but low passed. That's also set to 50%, but I'm inverting this shape. So as a result, uh, you always get a similar panning of the overall signal, but it adds a little bit of stereo variation, uh, of stereo width, because stereo is created whenever there's difference between the left and right channels. So for example, at the beginning, the first layer is playing mostly on the, right, on the left channel, and the second layer is playing mostly on the right channel. And that creates a little bit of width. Managing the width with this uh, width control in the utility, because by, without it, it sounds like this. And that's just a bit too wide to my ears, so I'm narrowing the width to 40%. But that's way more interesting than without this effect at all. Another effect I'm going to show you is erosion. And I made a dry wet knob for it as well, just like with the Redux. Uh, here's what it sounds like. All erosion is doing is it's adding a sine wave to your signal. And that creates a little bit of high frequency content. Here's what it sounds like all the way wet. It's really useful when you're trying to add a little bit of high frequency content, but it's often too much. So when I add erosion, it's often the, the high frequency content we are adding 
is all often too loud. So what I like to do is to put it in parallel mode with a dry wet knob and just turn down the wet signal a bit. With the erosion you can also add noise or white noise uh, into your signal. That can also sometimes sound interesting. It's definitely an effect you can mess around with uh, and it's also used to mostly degrade the quality of a sample. Let's take a look at the vocoder effect we've got here. I like to use the vocoder for changing drum samples, mostly. Uh, so here's what I mean by that. We've got a club sample and I'm applying a vocoder with this modulator setting on. That means I'm modulating this signal from this track with this effect. And I'm, I'm adding something like this to the sound. I mostly use it for like creative manipulation of audio samples. So here's how I do it. I put it mostly in the, on the wet setting when I'm messing around with the sample and I keep the depth first at 100% and I mess with this formant knob. And this formant knob is almost the same uh, thing that we have in complex pro mode, this formant setting. And also I always mess with this depth knob and here I just cranked it. And I like to blend these sounds that I create with the original samples with, the dr with this dry wet knob. Okay, and the last effect I'm going to show you is a saturator. And a saturator is a pretty obvious effect. It's similar to an overdrive. It just sounds a bit different. So by default, you have this view in the saturator. This effect has a hidden option which you can access by clicking this button. It's only available when you choose the wave shaper setting. When you choose this setting, you can mess around with all these options over here to create a really original sounding distortion. You can almost destroy a sound with this wave shaper. So that would be all the effects that I had prepared for you. I hope you learned something new. Thank you for watching and see you in the next videos. See ya.